We've got about, what is this at? About 15 and a half feet long, I think we measured. 15 and a half foot. Yeah, beautiful piece. Got some really cool character, knots and stuff like that. I like the look of it, but it is really straight still. So ideally, I love when we have logs and things that have twists and turns and branching and that type of stuff. Looks a little bit more natural, ties into the landscape. This is just a big giant log. So what we're gonna have to do to get rid of that straight appearance is we'll offset it with big boulders just to kind of give it a little bit more of a sweep to it. We'll also plant it up around it with different types of aquatic vegetation, even terrestrial plantings. We have these really cool pockets and things like that. We could fill this thing up with soil. We can do little soil pockets in there, get all different types of vegetation growing out of that, which really kind of will top this thing off. So as you can see, Trevor is ready to roll today. So is Ed. Yes. And so am I, and it is day three out here at the Rec Pond that we are going to be doing a certified Aquascape contractor event. As you guys all know, look behind me, this is where we left off yesterday, but we have our stepping stones all in through here. We have one more that needs to come in because that rock is actually about two and a half inches underwater currently, which is gonna be a really, really neat effect. So I'm standing at the stoop or the doorway coming out of the screen in porch, and the idea is you come out to this landing, you can either go right and kind of curve around through here down the steps or go straight left to a seating area to enjoy the pond while being outside of it and having a cup of coffee or anything in this little gathering spot and through here. So order of business today is going to be rocking in this little area close, leaving a spot for a brick wall that we're going to install that's going to mimic that brick wall right there. And then we'll continue rocking along this back edge. We've got to get the cavity behind the brick wall inside the liner on top of the fabric and all that stuff full of gravel to help push some of that groundwater out through our relief pipe that goes into our sump pit over there and also to give us a base to start rocking in this area back through here. Everything is extremely overdug back behind here but we needed to do that because as you saw in the last video all of the digging conditions that were arising because of the groundwater, the slumping of the soil, that kind of stuff. So we need to overdig everything so we need to take care of that, remediate that by putting gravel inside the liner. That'll also give our wall some structural stability when we start putting rocks behind it, but it's also what it will do is it will prevent any pocketing of water underneath the liner and allow it to get down to our relief pipe. So our area of focus is really going to be this part here and then kind of looping our way back around. So we're just waiting on Sean and Mike and Jason and the rest of the Earthworks crew to get here, but we're going to go ahead and get started and try and set a few rocks just to give the rest of their team places to work off and kind of fill in behind us as we go so that we can keep rolling efficiently and making progress moving forward. Sound like a good plan, Ed? Yes. 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 Okay, good. All right. things are definitely piecing together. Ed, we got that big boulder just behind you that will kind of push people either left over the steppers or veer them the other way yep. to go to the patio. Right now, we've got this big rock right here that's really gonna set this edge and really start off our peninsula. Exactly, so we wanna have that rock kind of diving down over in here. We're trying to keep as much width as possible inside the pond, so some of these rocks are really working well for us. We wanna bring that guy down, and then right here on this corner, we wanna accentuate this. We're gonna have a big, rocky peninsula over here, and then and we'll probably end up digging back into that hillside over there. And that's what I love working about a rubber liner type system. The liner was more than enough in width wise, so we have flexibility where we can carve stuff into those edges. The only thing that we have to be conscious of here is there's going to be a structure. There's an entire building that's going to go over the top of this pond, so we have parameters we have to stick within. So we, we want to make sure that he has room for all the lizards and the animals and all the plant material and the rest of the scaping that's going to go around it. The water feature, as water feature design and builders, we love water, but it's a balance. You want to make sure you have the right amount of water in the space to create the desired effect while still having room for the animals and for the people and for the interaction and all those other things that make this a recreational pond. That's excellent, excellent advice. Two things. One is the sand yep. that we're digging in yep. really motivates us to go that extra <laughs> step. You're right, because I mean, there's days where we're looking at the shape of the pond and back in our area, yep. it's heavy clay. Sometimes uh, it's 
socks to dig, and we're just like, ah. But today, <laughs> we're feeling extra ambitious, and we don't really care to take the extra time because the digging is so easy out here, is. which is always fun, it right? Yep. Because we're really, we are motivated to do those extra things. Oh, yeah. And then the second thing I just, and, I, and you touched on it great a second ago, but maybe elaborate a little bit more with that rocky peninsula, and when we are setting these rocks along the edge, yep. really focusing on the shape, yep. not only inside the rocks, the shape of the water, but also the outside. Can you speak to yeah, that yeah, real yeah, quick? Sure. So you see this a lot with contractors, with DIY installations, where you kind of get this, here's a perfect outline of a pond. You know, it's exactly perfect and there's nothing happening on the outside. We want to change elevations. You don't want water level here and all your boulders perfectly level. Actually, masons, I've seen some incredible masons who do beautiful stonework. They don't necessarily make the best pond builders and it's because they're thinking very linear. They want everything to be perfect. We want rocky peninsulas. We want boulders popping up in different sides. We're going to bring some of that stonework outside of the pond to really all tie it together. The last thing we want to do is have all this beautiful stonework on the inside and then nothing to support it on the outside perimeter. So rocky outcroppings and peninsulas to really make this look like a little hidden oasis. I mean, that's really our goal. And again, that's that little fine touch. You don't want too much rock on the outside. You don't want too little. So it's just that balancing act. And we want to use some of the right pieces, some big ones, a lot of things with character, maybe seat rocks and things like that. But these little rocky peninsulas are key as well as it's going to help change elevation. So here in Florida, very, very flat. And actually, most places we work with, when you go into a development where homes are, developers flatten out the ground in and around the property. So what we want to do is reestablish some interesting grades. So by having a rocky peninsula, we'll bring up the gradient a little bit, have a little bit of a hill dip down, and then it's going to pop back up by the waterfall. So I don't want to just have this massive waterfall in the back, then no other elevation changes around. It doesn't look right. Again, it's those subtle little things that make all the difference in the world. And this is basically just learn from nature. making again incredible progress like we always do here on the Team Aquascape channel. Right now what is happening is Mike, Ed and Tony, myself are going to be placing that log element that you saw in the last video. What this is going to do is we are intentionally dropping it in to create the edge and it's going to start back behind this rock and kind of slope down back behind me to create kind of that natural edge that we had talked about. Incorporating these wood elements into the pond as Ed articulated earlier is it just lends something so credible to the organic nature of the design of the pond. Right now, what we're trying to figure out is what's going to be the best side facing up, facing out, how it's going to look. So this might take a couple of takes. Maybe we'll get it in the first try, but we'll see. Definitely an educated guess because we've done this before, but I think it's going to look incredible and it's going to knock out that entire edge. And again, just really strengthen the overall design that we are looking for. All right, so Ed is wrapping up putting the geotextile fabric underneath to give that added protection. Take your out, give me about a foot and a half. So we have the log in as you can see, but we do have to modify it, which is kind of what we anticipated. We had a general idea of how we wanted it to look, and in order to achieve that look, we have to cut, we have to cut the bottom of this off all the way in a straight line, basically down to there to drop this whole edge down so that we can get the high side of this log much more underwater to where the water level would be somewhere over into there. Also, what that does is rather than it looking so straight, it drops that down, then we're able to get some nicer rock back behind it that's actually visible and you're not wasting or eating up any rock and it's really going to change the outer contour and shape of this pond edge. A few more steps but we are going to nail it and it's going to look incredible once it's done but that's just kind of the game plan in order to modify this thing so that it just looks nice and natural in through here. Okay well 
we've got it. I mean, it's in, it's finished, right? 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 I love it. I, you know, I always love adding these big, um, incredible log pieces. You know, Jason and Sean have always come through for us. They've always been able to find these incredible pieces. It's a nice piece of Cypress. This stuff will last a hundred years, <laughs> literally underwater. This stuff is great. It's got some really cool character, which we love. We wanted to accentuate that. Our water level is kind of coming in right in here. So this part will be above. We cut the bottom of that log. So we wanted to dive down. We don't want to put it in just like it's a Lincoln log just going perfectly straight. Doesn't look good, doesn't look natural. So we want to transition from outside the liner, from that from that landscaping down into the water and then disappear underwater. So that water level is actually going to wrap around the back of this. We're going to have a little backwater area. We're actually talking about having our waterfall coming through from the wetland as well as the main waterfall down into here into like a little shallow area and that water is just going to blast its way out of here, really helping with that overall circulation. We want to come in next. We have our pipe coming in for our jets, which is branching off. We'll probably tee off and actually have another jet kind of shooting out from here because this is kind of a strange little pocket. Could be a little bit of a dead zone. Come in here with a flat rock, do a little bit of a gravel bed behind it. This is another perfect location for some aquatic vegetation. So remember, I talked about this earlier, this big straight log coming in. We want to get rock on one side and then on the other. I don't want to do a rock here and here because then it just kind of, it, it keeps that straight shape. So we want to accentuate that stuff, really kind of pick up some of the sinewy nature of all this stuff. I'm loving the look of it. It's got this really cool hollowed out knot area up on the top. That's going to be right over by that main seating area. That's also going to be the perfect habitat for some of his lizards and different animals. This is all hollowed out. So they could actually be able to get down inside of there. It's going to be a perfect place. You know, actually, since it's covered, he won't have birds, but he probably will have other insects and things. I mean, those little pockets and things like that just are awesome. I mean, they could be planted with vegetation. They could be left as open water. So there's a lot of different things that we can do with that. And we'll see and we'll address that stuff a little bit later on. And Jason also said that they have some other pieces, not quite this large, but he's got some more pieces of driftwood and stuff like that back at Earthworks. So we might have a chance to go take a look at that stuff to see how we can incorporate that in. Again, we have one big, beautiful piece, but now I'd actually like maybe another one or two pieces just to kind of blend everything together. Just and it's all about repetition. Yep, strengthening you know, the, the so, design. So it's strengthening the design. We have this uh, architectural wall down below. We picked up just a little bit of it over there and that's going to tie into the patio. So it's blending all these different things together, which really helps with that design element. Fantastic. Well, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but my tummy <laughs> is talking I to me. I hear it like all day long, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so after about 9 a.m. Uh, <laughs> Lunch time.